This is John Mons Park, and up until recently, it was the site of North Field, a popular community baseball diamond that was unfortunately torn down by the city of Montreal in 2018. In fact, just a few miles north from here is one of the greatest monuments to the decline of baseball in Canada, the Olympic Stadium, which was once the home of the Montreal Expos. And while to many, Montreal has become a baseball graveyard in Canada, if we head down to Toronto, we see that baseball lives on. And there's whispers of a revival. Today, we're going to look at the Toronto Blue Jays and why baseball fans across Canada may just have a reason to be excited. The Toronto Blue Jays played their first game over 43 years ago on April 7th, 1977 against the Chicago White Sox before a home crowd of nearly 45,000 people. And uh, we'll have some activities underway now. It looks as though they're going to give it a real try to get this ball game underway. The snow has certainly uh, eased up considerably. It's just the white stuff on the field. It's the that game was the start of something beautiful though it certainly didn't feel like it. From 1977 to 1981, the Blue Jays would finish 7th of 7 in the American League East, having to deal with fully established juggernaut franchises like the New York Yankees, the Baltimore Orioles, and the Boston Red Sox. Almost all expansion teams in sports have required several years to get their legs underneath them. The Jays' first solid season didn't come until around 1982, when pitchers like Dave Steeb and Jim Clancy added some serious girth to the starting pitching rotation. That, alongside new manager Bobby Cox, gave Toronto fans some much needed inspiration. Nine years the Blue Jay fans have waited for this. There's a drive to George Bell, he's gotta come in. He's there, he's got it. The Blue Jays have won it. The Jays have won it. They've won the Eastern Division Championship. In 1985, the Jays made history by being the first Canadian baseball team to win their division. Yep, despite the Jays not being founded for eight years after Montreal and playing in a division with more teams than Montreal, the Expos never actually managed to win their respective division, the National League East, even once. From there on out, things started going Toronto's way. The drive of 85 saw Toronto win the division with new star Tony Fernandez. They finished 99-62, and 62, which is still to this day the franchise record for most wins in a season. The Blue Jays faced the Kansas City Royals in the American League Championship Series and took a three games to one lead. However, Kansas City won three consecutive games to win the series 4-3 and eventually win their first World Series championship. The Blue Jays would continue to be contenders for years to come, winning another division title in 1989, where they got eliminated in the first round by the Oakland Athletics. It was a discouraging time for fans who felt as though their team was on the brink of brilliance. And then, 1992 happened. The Blue Jays picked up Jack Morris, a workhorse pitcher and a hard-hitting DH in the form of Dave Winfield. The Jays clinched their second straight AL East crown and didn't get swept once in the entire season. Momentum was going the Blue Jays' way, including legendary moments like when Roberto Alomar hit a two-run bomb off Athletics closer Dennis Eckersley in the ninth inning, a game the Jays eventually won in the 11th. I have a bit of authority being able to talk about this, by the way. My name is Roberto. I was born in 1996 and was actually named after Roberto Alomar. Just ask my dad. Why is my name Roberto? Well, your mom and I were big baseball fans and loved the Toronto Blue Jays, and uh, we decided to name you after Roberto Alomar. Second baseman, Toronto Blue Jays. The Toronto Blue Jays were World Series champions, and the coming 1993 season would prove to be even more exciting. This Blue Jays roster was absolutely stacked, signing Paul Molitor and Dave Stewart. The team would end up having seven All-Stars on this roster, which is nearly unheard of. Among those were outfielders Devon White, Joe Carter, John Allerud, second baseman Roberto Alomar, and pitcher Pat Hentgen, and closer Dwayne Ward. The Jays even went out and signed the base-stealing icon Ricky Henderson from the Athletics as a rental. After a marvelous 1993 season, the Jays would again appear in the World Series, this time facing the Philadelphia Phillies, and while energy and excitement was high, no one could have ever predicted just how exciting this series' end would be. It's the scenario every kid dreams of, 
In the bottom of the ninth inning, Joe Carter hit a three-run walk-off home run to clinch the series, only the second World Series winning walk-off home run in the history of Major League Baseball. The city of Toronto was electric. Here's the pitch on the way, a swing and a foul! Left field, way back! Blue Jays win it! The Blue Jays are World Series champions! As Joe Carter hits a three-run home run in the ninth inning, and the Blue Jays have repeated as World Series champions! Touch them all, Joe! You'll never hit a bigger home run! Expectations going into 1994 were sky-high for the Blue Jays following their back-to-back championships, but they slumped to a 55-60 record and a third-place finish before the players' strike of 94. The players' strike is also a bit of a sore spot for fans in Montreal. A full 114 games into the season, the Expos were absolutely dominating the National League East at a scary 74-40, and with a team made up of stars like Moises Alou, Will Cordero, Larry Walker, and others. Since the mid-90s, the Jays have remained relatively silent, besides some very notable and exciting moments in 2015 and 2016, including the incredible home run hit by Jose Batista in Game 5 of the ALCS against the Texas Rangers in what is now simply referred to as the incredible inning. Everyone remembers the bat flip. The Blue Jays currently are developing in a way that the franchise has not seen since the 1980s, with the team unintentionally built around the sons of former baseball legends. These include Beau Bichette, son of all-star Dante Bichette, the Montreal-born Vladimir Guerrero Jr., son of former Expo and Blue Jay Vlad Guerrero, and Kevin Biggio, son of MLB Hall of Famer Craig Biggio. The team has been affectionately nicknamed the Junior Jays, though the nickname Blue Jeans has always sounded better. The 2020 season, which was shortened to just 60 games due to COVID, saw the Blue Jays go on some impressive winning streaks, at one point not losing eight series in a row. The season was filled with excitement as the young core developed, and Jays fans got a glimpse of how fun their future was about to be. With the newly signed ace pitcher Hyunjin Ryu, the Blue Jays managed to clinch a playoff berth for the first time since 2016. As the eighth seed in the expanded playoff format, they faced the top seeded Tampa Bay Rays where they were unfortunately swept two zilch in the best of three series. But fear not, the Blue Jays are one of the younger teams in the league, with a farm system to brag about. Prospects with insanely high potential, like flamethrower Nate Pearson, are due for a full season. The head office seems ready to spend, and with the Jays surpassing their expectations already in the 2020 season, the entire MLB knows that the Blue Jays are a dynasty team waiting to happen. So could we see another rise of baseball in Canada? We've seen it before during the 2015 season. While sporting rivalries between cities will always exist, you only have to look back at the Toronto Raptors' recent NBA championship success to see how a Canadian team in a North American league can unite the country and reignite interest in the sport. A successful Canadian baseball team would mean more Canadians wanting to play the sport and more support for campaigns that look to save desperately needed community spaces such as the North Field. Thank you for watching. If you're enjoying our content, by clicking on the link in the description, and for less than $5 a month, you can join us on our mission to provide untampered, independent news. Along with gaining access to the premium content reserved for our members, and being able to view everything completely ad-free.